Fortunately, this game survived the weather today as we visit Suffolk to see Leyston take on Wingate and Finchley. Welcome to match day 40. Just three points separate these two sides, but it's Leicester who are on the better form. They're unbeaten in their last four games. As for Wingate and Finchley, they haven't won in their last four, but both these sides will have aspirations of still finishing in this season's playoffs. You have to say the ground staff have done exceptionally well to get this game on today. The blue lines now on the pitch. And this game ready to go between two sides separated by only a few points. For the home side, Leyston, they have Jake Reed up front for them today after his recent transfer from local rivals Lowestoft Town. And for Wingate and Finchley, their top scorer, Rob Laney, starts on the bench today. Both these sides still have aspirations of finishing in the playoff places. But Leyston are on the good run of form coming to the final stages of the season unbeaten in their last four much to do on both sides today if they are to finish in the top five come the end of April home side with the throw and looking to get some early momentum in this game but it's Wingate that come away with the ball they're dangerous if they can play that ball to the far side lucky ricochet but does there, allow them to pick it up. Nobody's closing down, and it's a shot that just goes wide. And I'm sure there'll be a few having a few words there because nobody was closing Rapai down. He got the shot off, and it just went wide. Corner to Layston. In it comes, high over everybody. It's flicked in. The keeper is there. It somehow bounces away, and it's a real opportunity. Nobody seemed to know where the ball was. It came all the way across. Keeper came, didn't claim it, didn't get it at the second attempt. And I'm sure Shane Gore relieved. Another chance for Leyston to perhaps put their marker down on this game. It's Dunbar who plays it all the way across. Keeper comes out, doesn't get it again. Ball's bouncing around, needs to be cleared and it's the second time that Shane Gore has come out there and not collected the ball. Really nervy from the keeper inside these first few minutes. Here come Leyston again and this time a chance to drive forward from Darren Mills. Darren Mills on his right foot, it's well blocked and Wingate will get the ball away but Leyston intercept and they can't get the ball out of their own half and Lawrence will put the ball in this time. It's going to fall to the edge of the box, is it? Wingate really need to regain some possession just to compose themselves in this game. Tijan Sai with a little bit of room and Tijan Sai has lost the ball and now it's an opportunity again for Henderson to come forward. Henderson looks to play a ball in. He does into the path of Reed. Reed, what can he do? On his right foot goes back to Henderson. Henderson shoots across the goal. Henderson just wide. Layston again causing problems for the visitors it was cheaply given away Henderson did much of the work and eventually his shot a whisker past the post real signs of danger for Wingate and Finchley Lawrence hassling and eventually forcing the mistake and it does come back to Byron Lawrence who runs across the halfway line and looks for the ball in and it's going to be collected now by Finch and Finch goes could it be tapped in on the far post by Mills just taps it in and sends Layston into the lead and you have to say it's been coming this afternoon much pressure from the home side and it was Darren Mills who managed to find the net in the 18th minute a few complaints from these Wingate and Finchley players, although I'm not quite sure why. It was Byron Lawrence with an excellent ball. Darren Mills 
managed to stay on sides. And the ball across from Finch. Found Mills. It was a tight angle. And managed to steer it home. 1 0 to Layston. And thoroughly deserved. And the question was was Mills offside on that first passage of play? And it was actually the keeper that got a touch. And Mills put it in. Much debate to whether Mills was offside initially. But the play went on. Keeper got a touch. And Mills tapped it home at the far post. Long throw down the line and this time Wingate perhaps can come forward. Lovely touch by Rapai and Wingate do come forward and they've got a man over now if they can get the ball in. Back in to Rapai. Rapai takes it down onto his right foot. What can he do? Steers to his left. Lovely footwork. Going to eventually come all the way out to Beckles Richards. And he'd have hoped to do much better with that shot from the edge of the area. Neat work there from Rapai. Lovely bit of trickery. Fell to Beckles Richards. He was being closed down. That's well over the bar. Again, Layston coming forward. They've had the better of this first half. You have to say the pitch is uh, looking exceptional considering the weather that they had up here this morning. Back to Dunbar, who's done a lovely piece of skill there to just get past Eiffel, and he delivers the ball into the box, and it's collected by the keeper. Well worth seeing that a few times. Seb Dunbar, great control and skill. Really lovely one-two there. And Seb Dunbar with one of the showboats of the season. The cross came in, and it was almost a second for Mills. Long ball high up towards Charles Smith, who looks to win the ball, and the referee just having a look at it, and he's given the free kick to Wingate and Finchley on the edge of the box. Clear foul there, just outside the area. More than a few over this ball. Can they get themselves back into this game? It's a free kick that goes well over the bar, and it was Beckles Richards with his second shot of note of the game. And for the second time, flies over the crossbar. You have to say, Wingate and Finchley have done well to get in at half time. Only one goal down. They've got possession now. What can they do at the start of this second half? They're driving forward with Eiffel onto his right foot. Looks to dink the ball into the box. It goes up towards Rapai. Can't reach it. Will come all the way to Edie. Edie again puts the ball into the box. It's bouncing around and Jack Ainsley does get the ball away for the home side. And Layston can come forward as some of the snow starts to come down again. Chase down by Mills, that's a terrible ball and Reed's going to get onto the end of it and Reed is going to put Wingate in trouble, now it's going to be put in by Finch and it's 2-0 to Leyston in the early stages of this second half and it was a terrible mistake from Wingate and Finchley, Reed pounced, went round the keeper Gore and just laid the ball across for Christy Finch to tap home, the easiest chance that he's going to take this season and a few of the visiting defenders just scratching their heads. And so they may. It was a dreadful error by Cronin. Tried to play the ball back to Gore. Got it all wrong. And Finch just in the right place to steer the ball home. An assist for Jake Reed on his debut. And an easy finish from Finch. But you have to say, Sean Cronin has gifted Layston a 2-0 lead and it's going to be a long way back for the visitors now. Again that ball over to the far side and there's a little bit of room here, what can they do? And it's a clumsy challenge, referee points to the spot and it's going to be a penalty for Layston. And this time it's Eiffel who's made the mistake. It was a ball across to the far side and Eiffel just got behind his man. And once you make a challenge in the box there, 
the referee always going to have a decision to make it didn't look like there was much in it but the referee had no hesitation pointed to the spot and it will be Jack Ainsley to make it three Ainsley is three great penalty top corner from Jack Ainsley no chance for Gore and Layston now you'd say home and dry 3-0 up and the dominant sides 55 minutes gone Jack Ainsley superb penalty if ever you want to see a penalty that's where you want it to be top corner no chance for Shane Gort an hour gone and you have to say it's damage limitation now for the visitors as Lawrence comes forward and not going to trouble Shane Gore this time with that shot Moncur, some nice work, plays it inside to Rapai, who's been involved in much of the good stuff that Wingate and Finchley have done this afternoon. Rapai onto his left foot, plays a neat little ball in, inside the box, comes back to Rapai, he's on his right foot this time, what can he do? Can't quite get the shot out, good defending, edge of the area, and again it's going to be a shot from Beckles Richards. Third time now that we've seen an effort from Beckles Richards, from the edge of the box, and again, can't trouble the keeper and can't get it on target, well over the bar. Matt Blake going to be introduced to the action, the league's top scorer last season. We really do have some threat with Jake Reed and Matt Blake in their ranks as we head towards the final stage of the season. Here is Matt Blake, crosses the ball, it goes all the way over and just comes off the crossbar. It was Matt Blake's introduction to the game, first touch. Not sure if it was a cross or a really exquisite effort, but it comes up back off the top of the bar. Shane Gore didn't really know where that ball was going to bounce. It's been a comfortable afternoon for Leicester you have to say disappointing from Wingate and Finchley still themselves have a chance to reach those playoffs it comes to Carl Hammond now on his right foot what can he do checks back inside on his left Hammond all the way to the far post it's cleared away and Wingate perhaps can break now and they've got room if they can find it Beckles Richards does manage to play that ball out to the far side and it's with Moncur Moncur forced back plenty of bodies now Back for Leyston. Still Wingate come forward. Charles Smith using his strength to hold off Dunbar. Needs some support though. Almost as if Wingate and Finchley are wasting time now. Charles Smith does finally manage to get the ball back onto his left foot. It's cleared away. A little bit of a spell of possession for the visitors. Chance for a shot now. Strike on goal and it's going to go wide. It's been the story of the game for Wingate and Finchley. Plenty of room to drive and shoot. Never troubling Marcus Garnham, who really hasn't had much to do in this game. Blake working hard to try and get the ball back for his team and he does play a part in winning that back and it falls to Brothers who plays it all the way to the far side towards Lawrence. Another chance to cross here, could be ball into the middle and it came back to Byron Lawrence on his right foot on the penalty spot. And I'm sure he would have hoped to have done a little bit better there. Great ball into the middle, he was just stretching though with his right foot, couldn't get it on target. Rapai again involved for Wingate and Finchley, plays it across to Beckles Richards. A little bit of room now. Plenty of Leyston players back. Tijen Sai goes for the shot. Edge of the area. Comes back to him. Plays it in. A few half-hearted calls to the referee for a penalty there. It's a lovely dinked ball into the box. There was a coming together. And that was... Referee got it spot on. Absolutely nothing there. I'm not going to get those. Leyston really are on fine form. 
unbeaten in their last four. It's going to be five this afternoon and they still come forward now. Chance for perhaps to add to the tally. Goes all the way into the box. It falls to Jake Reed. What can he do? Reed onto his right foot. Reed drives it home and Gore makes the save. Such a potent strike force now for Leiston with Reed and Matt Blake up front. It was Reed who had the shot and Gore made the save. It was a comfortable save in the end from the keeper. It's their one last opportunity for Leiston just to add to their tally. The ball comes through to Christy Finch, goes all the way across, and it's going to be Reed who does add to their tally. And Jake Reed does get his goal this afternoon already with an assist and you have to say it's an impressive performance by the recent signing for Leiston it was Finch this time providing the assist and Finch's ball across and Reed not going to miss from there places the ball into the net and it rounds off a really successful afternoon for the home side. 4 0 now. They lead. And there's going to be no time for Wingate to even get a consolation in this game. And the referee does blow the final whistle. Wingate and Finchley have been challenging for promotion for much of the season, but they've just hit a really sticky patch. And as for Leiston, they're in fine form and now unbeaten in five. A really convincing win here this afternoon. And with Jake Reed now in their ranks, they will be fancying their chances of finishing in the top five come the end of the season. It's finished here. Leiston four, Wingate and Finchley nil. The first half we competed, I thought the f it was a suspicion of offside for the first goal. Whether it was second phase or not, I don't know, but there was suspicion of offside. Uh, we come in at half time, we tell them to get the ball down, put it in good areas because the weather's not the best, the pitch is not the best. We played not too badly, but I felt that we were a little bit toothless in terms of we, we, we put a bit of possession together, but we never had no end product to it. But listen, I, I got to be very careful how I go. I got 10 games left and, you know, I don't want to be too critical. I can be critical in my changing room, but I don't want to be too critical in public to the players because it's not fair on them. But I will, I will say that we, we keep giving teams goals at the minute and sooner or later that's going to hurt us. Yeah, 4-0. I thought we played the game really well today. I thought first half we started the game really well, got an early goal, got a good goal. All three forwards involved in it, so that's pleasing. And then I just felt we give the ball away too many times first half and we were a little bit slack with the ball. But I thought second half um, we were outstanding. I thought we kept the ball well, we moved the ball well between the lines. We pulled Wingate all over the place really and um, I don't think they could really deal with the movement. And yeah, 4-0, I'm really pleased. I've got teenagers on the pitch as well, you know, I've got young lads on the pitch and they don't give you the consistency, you know. If, if they give you the consistency, you don't hang on to them for too long. But that's been my problem this year. We've been, we've been consistent and then, it's like I said earlier on the season, we've won six games in a row. And I said, this in a, I said this a few months ago when I thought the club would get ahead themselves that we could easily lose six games in a row. And that's the position we are in now. Unbelievably, I should have, should have kept my mouth shut. You know, we've had some fantastic results. We beat Billericay, we drew against Margate, which we should have won here. Then we've picked up some good results on the road to Un, Kingstonian. And then to come back here today and play a Wingate side who, you know, are a very good side. And I was pretty surprised the way he most probably set up today. I was a little bit, I thought he might have been on the edge of the playoffs, gone for it a little bit more. Um, sat back, most probably showed us a little bit too much respect to start the game. Um, but like I say, Keith knows his football, very, very good manager, got a lot of respect for the guy and um, he'll most probably go here, chew over the bad bits, um, take the positives out of today's game and um, he'll try and move on. But for us, Tunbridge on Tuesday and then Staines, it's all in our hands. We've got to beat these sides and if we want to have a push for playoffs, we've got a chance. We're there or thereabouts. I said to the boys today, eight wins out of ten, I think, see you there. So now we'll be looking for seven out of nine and um, we'll just keep chipping away at it. And finally, we'll just say happy St Patrick's Day. And how are you going to celebrate tonight after that? Well, I'll have one pint of Guinness, you know. Um, I am Irish, yeah, of course. But <laughs> us lads from up north don't celebrate as much as the Bob from down south. So I, I leave the, I leave the, uh, 
the uh, the parties from down south to celebrate tonight. I'll have a quiet one. Congratulations, Jake. I made you the Bostick man of the match today. Can you give your opinion how the game went? Uh, it was a really good game, to be fair. Um, I was just the whole 90 minutes, I was waiting for a chance. And I think on the 90th minute, obviously, I fell. I was over the moon, mate. But, yeah, it was a good game. I think we controlled the game all game. I mean, in fact, I was just... Half the time, I was just getting in the middle, hoping I'd get across in, just to try and get a goal. But, yeah, we got one in the end. Do you think joining Leiston now will push them over the line for the playoff for positions? I hope so, mate. I hope so. Um, I hope I can come in and do what I've done for Lewis over the years. Obviously, bring bring a lot of goals. Hopefully, I can get more here than what I've... Because I achieved to get over 30 this season. I know I'll be happy with that. I've, I've always got 20 at Lewis off, 20, 25. So, yeah, hopefully I can bring that goals to Leicester million dollar question why did you leave last off and come to the local rivals Leicester I suspect there's quite a lot of people want to know the answer to that question a uh, million, do- million people have asked me that question mate there's a lot of priorities at home at the moment I've just got a house and a car you know and these things come first I've got a family to look after as always plenty of other important games across the Bostic Premier Division today Billericay Town remain top of the Bostic Premier Division despite having six games in hand on their nearest rivals, Folkestone Invicta. At the bottom of the table, Burgess Hill Town remain in 24th position, but they have four games in hand on their nearest rivals, Tooting and Mitcham United. At the top of the Bostic North, AFC Hordchurch move ever closer to promotion. They're now 10 points clear of nearest rivals, Bowers and Pitsy, and no change at the bottom of the North table. As for the Bostick South, it remains as close as ever at the top with Lewis leading the way and the chasing pack all vying for automatic promotion. A win for Leiston today means their hopes and aspirations of reaching the playoffs continue. Much work to do for Wingate and Finchley. (laughs) 